Hi, welcome to Inlandia Literary Journeys. I am Katie Porter, Executive Director of the Inlandia Institute, and I'm here today with Francis McConnell, who is the author of Direction uh, of oh. Longing. Thank you. And I uh, have known Francis for quite some time. She's a contributor to both Poemelian, a journal of poetry, and Inlandia Literary Journey. And I'd like to hear her read today. Thank you, Katie. Yes. Uh, I have two poems I'm going to read today. And the first one comes out of an exercise that I've done when I've taught creative writing classes, poetry workshops. At, I used to teach at UC Riverside. And I was involved in a Gluck fellowship that went to the um, public schools and did uh, poetry. And right now I'm co coaching a little group working workshop at Pilgrim Place, which is a retirement community where I live in Claremont. And what I do is I ask everyone to, to write down the, every pair of shoes that they've ever owned that they can remember. It's amazing how many pairs some people will come up with, too. Um, hundreds sometimes. And um, then they have to write something about one of those pairs of shoes. So this is about a pair of tap shoes. And when I was, I don't know, third grade, second grade, my parents signed me up for dance because I had flat feet. And my doctor said that dancing would help. So I wasn't really built for it. Um, so, tap shoes. Hooves of metal clip-clopping. You have to learn to make them tappity-tap. Every step announces you. Tap forward, tappity back. Shuffle clink sideways. Pick up the scratchy purple rope, thick as a baby rattler. Skip skipping. Three sequined girls on stage. Slim, plump, plumper. I check to see if I'm still the one in the middle. Heavy shoes not like our ballet slippers, so tight your feet puff up on top, so light you'd float unless you were a chub like me. Earthbound, I trip, catch myself, frown, then flash those pearlies, and ye shall be forgiven, so says our master. On taps, if you stumble, clunk, you add a clankety clank. Three girls in sequined baby bonnets. Rapidy swish, rapidy rap rap. Cymbals clash, a concert of cymbals. The air jangling behind us. Our mouths made coy. Our eyes trying to sparkle. Tippity tip, rackety rack rack. Cloppity clop, stumpity stump. Then one, two, three, all bow together. Um, I've had a lot of deaths of family and friends in the last few years, and I've written a lot of elegies. This isn't an elegy, but it is a poem about death, um, more serious. And death is the dark prince in the poem, and it's called Old Mother Moon. Mother Moon licking a white path through the waves, is that the way home? When will my dark prince come on his white yacht to carry me away? The voice of youth tells stories that make the old ache in their breast bones, a flutter of ache, no matter how lovely their pleasures. Pleasures wear thin, wear us out, until flesh is a cloud of atoms dispersing on the wind. Beyond the sea, blackberries remember how they grew once among thorns, how they blossomed one season and the next ran red and sticky, then dried to dusty pebbles, how bears fumbled among them and honeybees hatched over and over. This is the childhood I carry in my head like an address flooded with the rising of a dam. The dam that made the power for the nuclear plant where father's cells caught the sickness, mortality. The aging children pray for deliverance from the wreckage of the ancients. And for themselves at the end, a short slide down a chute into the path of moonbeams. I tell you this now while the water line still dips and rises gently with the tide. Shoot, prayer, bury, flesh, flutter, path, mother moon. Thank you.
Thank you, Francis. And now we have Lucia Galloway, who is the author of Venus and Other Losses and Playing Outside, as well as a contributor to both Paul Melian and Inlandia, A Literary Journey. So welcome, Lucia. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to read three poems. Uh, the first is titled Suburban Vespers. When flagstones stored heat on the soles of your feet seems enough, when rounding the corner of the house to see your cats restless in the Indian summer night disappearing in the glow of the street lamp makes you think of baked bread, at these moments you know that no sycamore's leaves will fail to call you in their drift from the tree, no sprinkler head forget its chant, no lime neglect its ripening, nor fountain rippled golden pond, garden pond lose ardor for the frogs and minnows harbored in its waters. The sundial is shadowed, useless. Night things are pulsing with their vows. Even the coyote crossing the green belt by the swimming pool, its long loping gait. This next poem titled Repertoire comes out of my attempt throughout the early, the spring and early summer to write down the sounds that the mockingbird was making. And um, so I toyed with how I could deal with that in a poem and uh, then the crows came along and I found that there was some drama, so this is um, repertoire. To see from the attic window a crow perched atop a street light, stalwart in profile, its open beak gobbling a wedge of morning sky, is to worry where the mockingbird has got to, taking his accomplished throat his perky, perky repertoire of song. What am I to expect from a wedding in the attic? A second marriage starting over, this time from the top down, fringing a future from the rafters like hanks of garlic hung a while in the dryness. Just look at my dress pulled from a dusty trunk, papery skirt a droop in the stillness, sleeves stuffed with cobwebs and vowels. Hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it. I do, and listen harder. Come here, come here, come here. From somewhere near, I hear an answer. Wheat, wheat, wheat. I translate, sweet, 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 hoping I have really heard, not dreamed it, like the morning when I thought the mockingbird could imitate the crow. Girl, girl, girl. It sounded sunnier, more melodic than his jet black rasping lilt. Just now a cook has climbed the attic stair with heavy tread and meat sticky hands, come to fetch a braid of garlic for the kitchen. I'll close with a poem that won the mystery box contest for Pomelian <laughs> several years ago. Woman opening nested boxes. What she had seen and lost and what she had known in fable, what she approached over and over in her mind's eye, more vivid than each 4 a.m. visit, each shining apparition in the dark pooled light of the fruit cellar, the shots comer. This she might yet recover, this seed enclosed in the rind of a cloud-bound moon or a root-tangled moon caught in the mirror of a well's black face. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Lucia. Thank you, Francis. And if you'd like to know more about Inlandia Literary Journeys, please visit our blog at localauthors.pe.com and read our column every Tuesday in the Press Enterprise. So for Inlandia Literary Journeys, this is Katie Porter. and. Uh, Thank you very much.